All right, so before we get right into the video, I just wanted to issue a quick spoiler warning. I won't be discussing or showing gameplay of any key plot points within the story, although I will be showing some gameplay of bosses, strongholds, things along that line. So if you don't want to see any spoilers of any gameplay moderately far into the story, uh, click off this video. This video ain't for you. Although if you don't care, uh, enjoy the video, guys. All right, Diablo 4. <laughs> I almost can't even believe I'm saying that. Uh, in 2023 but yes Diablo 4 early access is live the game is out and I have so much I want to say about it I'm going to keep my thoughts in this video pretty brief pretty quick although I will be making a ton of videos on Diablo 4 um, I did want to post the first couple days uh, I kind of just wanted to experience the game play the game and believe it or not I'm actually not too far into the story but I'll get into that at a later point in this video but yeah we're going to go uh, from point to point I'm going to try and section this video off so it you know it's one thing at a time so it's not all over the place so we're just going to jump right into it all right, so the first thing I definitely want to talk about is the actual launch day of the early access. Um, surprisingly enough, and you know, this is probably a shock to a lot of people, but this is arguably, if not the best launch Blizzard has ever had for a brand new AAA release of one of their games. Um, this was by far the smoothest Blizzard launch I've been around for, and I know, you know, I haven't been around for all of them. I've been around, I think, since like maybe a little bit before Overwatch for a couple games, but like usually a blizzard release like the launch day is terrible it's normally one of the worst experiences ever because you're never able to get into the game at a reasonable time you're always waiting in queues you're always getting kicked out stuff like that but this one oh my gosh the queue times i think it was maybe like a minute or two i waited and then when i got into the game there was a couple issues sometimes uh like with like lag and everything but like other than that this launch was incredibly smooth the blizzard team should be very proud of themselves and i think everybody is virtually happy with the actual launch day itself it was very impressive especially for a game of this caliber and this size and the amount of people that were playing this on day one um, even though it's early access is not the technical day one uh, a lot of people were playing early access a lot of people bought the ultimate or deluxe edition and you know for the a day one launch this was by far the best blizzard one and you know i was actually very thoroughly surprised and pleased with how day one of this game went all right, the classes. I'll keep this one pretty brief. Um, you can see in the gameplay I'm showing you guys, I'm maining Sorcerer. Sorcerer was my first choice going into the early access. Although with the server slams uh, that I did do, I did play Druid, I did play Necromancer, and I did play a little Sorcerer. Um, I've been hearing Barbarian is also like probably the strongest class in the game, but I've been playing Sorcerer the most by far. And honestly, I am loving Sorcerer so much. I also played Druid the most probably in the server slam, and I really did like Druid. A lot of people are giving Druid a little bit of shit, um, saying it's kind of it needs a lot of buffs and it's not very strong. I disagree. I mean, I'll have to try it again in the actual release to see if they changed anything or if it's really not as strong as people are saying. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed Druid. I thoroughly enjoyed Necromancer. Necromancer is definitely a little more weak in this game than it was in Diablo 3. Um, but, you know, obviously things are subject to change. Balancing is definitely a thing that Blizzard wants to focus on with this game. But by far, I think I th we definitely need more classes. But for a launch, having five classes is actually really, really nice. I really do enjoy it. Um, all the classes I've seen have been, you know, pretty positively reviewed by everybody uh, besides Druid. Like I said, that's the only one that people are a little upset about. Um, but I'll have to get in there and try it once I'm done with my Sorcerer. And then, you know, I'll give my full opinions on Druid. But overall, I think the classes are really, really strong. All right, the story. So I will make this very clear before I start talking anything about the story. I have not completed the story. I have not finished the story on any character yet. So you're probably wondering why I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about what I feel uh, about the story as of how far I've got in. I'm in Act 3 currently. Um, the reason I haven't finished the story is because I've been literally doing everything in terms of side quests, dungeons, uh, sellers, the events. Uh, there's a second tier for the events. I forget what they're called, but like the events and then the tier two events. I've been doing literally all that. I've been messing around trying to open up all the areas and everything. So I haven't gotten a chance to complete the story fully. Although I will say the story so far is really, really good. It's really strong. And it's kind of hard to make a story in games like this that actually have like traction and actually have like weight to it. But like something about the music, something about the way characters talk in this game, you kind of feel um, the despair in their voice and you kind of feel like you're all with the journey which is also another difficult thing to do that i think they're nailing so far in this game is it, it's difficult to make your character fit into the story and feel like what you're doing has an impact sometimes um destiny is a good example of that that's not a shot at destiny but i'm just saying uh, but this game you actually do feel like you are a part of the story and you do feel like you are contributing you feel like you are the one taking these demons down and i really do appreciate that so so far the story is really good um you might also be wondering the gameplay you're seeing is world tier one i've been playing in world tier two for the, the campaign and everything like that uh for this gameplay i turned it down to world tier one because i was just messing around recording some gameplay doing some strongholds all that type of stuff um so you know don't worry i am playing in world tier two just not for this gameplay 
All right, the power fantasy. Ooh, I've been waiting to talk about this one. Um, the power fantasy in this game is awesome. Um, at least from a sorcerer's perspective, um, the power fantasy in this game is great. You really do feel like you're getting more and more powerful with every single level. It's not just like your abilities just improve. Like there's different nodes you can go to. I haven't gotten to the Paragon system yet, which is you unlock that at level 50. I haven't gotten to that yet. But so far for the actual skill trees and everything like that, I'm not sure I, I'm as big of a fan of the actual layout of the skill tree per se, but the actual power fantasy along with unlocking these abilities and being able to upgrade these abilities and the items you find giving them even more stats and everything like that you really really do feel like you're getting more powerful and you're doing more damage to these enemies the higher level you get and the more stuff you unlock it's a really great feeling and i'm so glad they kind of nailed that in this game at least from a sorcerer's perspective definitely druid as well and necromancer from what i could you know when i played those characters i can't speak on barbarian or rogue uh but from what i've experienced and what i've played it really does feel like the power fantasy in this game is super strong strong and it is really really nice to see um, i'm very excited to hit max level and see all the different nodes of what i can do the different builds everything like that i have one build that i'm currently using you're seeing in this gameplay uh, but you know i've just been absolutely loving the whole power fantasy and feeling like an actual demon slayer it's so cool all right so we're gonna get into my issues with the game as of right now i don't have too many big issues with the game just some minor ones that i do want to point out and make a note of if you're planning on buying this game just some things you should probably know the first of which this game is very very buggy um which is typical with a release like this you know this is technically an mmo now um diablo is normal i mean it's an arpg but it's like has a lot of mmo aspects to it and a lot of mmos when they release there's a lot of bugs there's a lot of glitches stuff like that uh the first one i want to talk about is the textures you'll find in this game that there's a lot of like you know trees rocks that will just completely glitch out all over your screen um you know i didn't actually record anything of that happening although I'm, i promise you you will run into it like once or twice in the first like 20 minutes of the game it's happened to me quite a few times and it is kind of just something to point out because you know the texture glitches and you know the environment glitches and stuff like that they are prominent on your screen sometimes they don't go away especially they can happen in like boss arena and stuff like that and it can be quite an annoyance so that is something i wanted to point out um the other thing is the loot issue um which the sorry the loot glitch issue which sometimes when you're doing events, when you're doing dungeons, when you're doing cellars, when you're just opening chests, especially if you're partied up with somebody, sometimes, and this has happened to me quite a few times, you can't actually open the chest it'll say like cl right click to open and then you go to open it and it just doesn't open you get no loot from it um that's happened to me with a couple events it's happened to me in a couple dungeons and i think a cellar or two um it's kind of annoying especially when you clear something like a dungeon and then you don't get anything from the chest um i believe most of the time it will go to your stash for stuff you missed uh you know legendary stuff like that goes to your stash and then you can pick it up from there if you missed it although it's just kind of an annoyance that you know when i complete something i can't really get the loot sometimes that is obviously a bug that they're going to fix, of course, um, but it is just something to be aware of if you do purchase this game. Uh, you know, that does happen from time to time. You know, it could happen more for you, it could happen less for you. Who really knows? Uh, but that, those are like the two prominent issues with the game. The other issue, which is not, uh, it's not really an issue with the game, it's more an issue with Blizzard, is the price tag. We gotta be honest, uh, the price tag is way too expensive for this game, $70. Um, I do honestly recommend it though. I can't like say the game's bad and you shouldn't buy it because it's $70, but I honestly am a little sick and tired of games costing more and more every year, and Diablo 4 is no exception. I wish this game was $60, although if I'm being honest, it's kind of worth it at the same time. Um, this is one of those games, and probably the only $70 game I've seen that's released in the past two years that is actually worth the price tag of getting. This game is great so far, and I'm very excited to see what they do with this game in the future in terms of like seasons, uh, more dungeons, more world bosses, stuff like that. The loot in this game is great but the issue is the price tag a lot of people can't just throw 70 dollars at a game like this and that's kind of a problem and it's kind of making the gamer exclusion just it's just making it even more exclusive and i don't like that i don't like my games being exclusive i like free to play games mainly uh destiny 2 is a good example of that it's a free to play game it was an expensive 60 dollars game but now it's a you know it's a free game technically even if you have to pay for the dlcs i won't get into all that but what i'm trying to say is i think the price tag's a little too high i really hate that i had to spend or i didn't have to but i spent a hundred dollars to get the ultimate edition of course uh you know i kind of wish it was just a little cheaper but you know that's just an issue with blizzard not really an issue with the game but even with all that being said, I am feeling a very strong 9.5 out of 10 on Diablo 4. I am absolutely loving this game, even with the small issues that I had with like the glitches and the price tag and all that. Um, you know, once again, I wouldn't recommend getting a $100 version of this game. Although if you guys want to get the normal version, by all means, I'd highly recommend it. This game is great. I'm having a ton of fun. I plan on posting a lot of content in this game. And yeah, final verdict, 9.5 out of 10. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it for my first impressions of Diablo 4. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe. I post new videos every single week, and I plan on posting more Diablo 4 content. And don't worry, I don't plan on stop posting Destiny 2 content. It's just, you know, Diablo 4 came out. I really want to make videos and talk about this game. Plan on doing some streams with it, too. Uh, but once again, hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you, and have a great rest of your day. All right, bye.